and he's not bringing people to heaven. Uh -huh. We make that choice. That's up to us to accept Christ and all that he came to do offers us and gives us certain privileges and certain rights. And one of those is to go where he is. And that's where I'm leaving. He says, he says, when I come back, he's going to take us where he is because where he is, is where everything that he's talked about in the scripture comes to life, where everything is alive. And one of the things that we talk about even now, why do we talk about love? Because the one thing that trouble, triumphs, and problems in life does, it makes us doubt what other people care about us. Isn't that right? Yeah. Well, what people do, I, you know, you just rub me the wrong way. I, you told me you was going to do it and you can't do it. You say you're going to do something you don't do because you didn't have the moment to correct that. Now all of a sudden people look at you as a liar and somebody that didn't tell, tell the truth and etc. No, I'm not a liar. I just didn't get the opportunity as soon as I thought I would get to offer my apology and change. Did you know the Bible said that a man should swear to his own hurt? You know what that means? That means if you say it, do it. If you can't do it, you stand behind it. And the only person that have the authority to release you from it is the one that you promised it to. I mean, if you're going to stand by the scripture. He so loved you and I. And when I talk about, when I talk about this whole love business, you think that it doesn't have anything to do with it. But let me tell you something. If you cannot love the Lord Jesus Christ whom you see every, whom you don't see, if, if you say you do, you may want to, you might want to check that out because the people you're supposed to love are the ones you can see. The ones that you claim you do love, I love the Lord. We sing about it. We declare it. But you can't love him and hate people that he loves. You can't love him and dislike people that he loves. A testimony of your love is to love the people that don't love you. See, there's no reward for that. People that you love and they love you back, there's a reward. There's a certain amount of gratitude and a certain amount of warmth and authenticness that you get from that. But when people don't love you back, you don't feel anything in return. And even the Lord Jesus Christ, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Do what I'm asking you to do. Do what I say to you. And we don't take the whole word as a commandment in the 66 books of the New Testament. We focus on the Ten Commandments. No, the Ten Commandments can be outlined as talking points under which a whole lot of additional information comes under. Hello, somebody. Did you know that the Lord says that we are to walk as he walked? The Bible tells us that in Ephesians. Turn to Ephesians chapter 5. As dear children. Hold, hold it. Hold it. So this, then this is not a, a suggestion. For me to walk in love is not a suggestion. Because this is wrote out in scripture to remind us that God's attitude about loving and walking in love is very serious. Be ye therefore followers of God. You know that word follow is translated imitator? Mm -hmm. So what he's really saying, he says, I want you to mimic what I do. I want you to imitate me when it comes to interacting with people, loving and being loved, giving and receiving love. He says, I want you to do what I do as dear children. And what I like about that is that number one, children usually do what they're told to do by parenting, but also he's given us an opportunity to grow in this thing. Mm -hmm. It's just like children growing the things that they're, he said, I want you to grow in love and I want love to flow in you. Okay, that second verse for me. And walk in love as Christ also have loved us. You see that? Walking in love, perfecting love to the degree that it's not a visit. It's not something you do when you feel good, you feel warm to it. He says, all of time. How much can you take from unlovely and unlikable people? How much can you stand up against? Can you?
Can your love stand the test of time? Wow. Look at that. Can you handle it? And I'll tell you, a lot of church people may find that challenging to do. Are you with me? Yeah. We've been commanded. Now, listen to this. If I really love the Lord, he says, if, I'll, if I do keep his commandments, I've got to reach souls for him. Mm -hmm. Because when he left, it was about reaching souls. Go and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes in his baptized shall be saved in my name. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. And we're relying, listen to me, listen to me. I think we're going to get in trouble. I really do. I think we're going to get in trouble. Because we're relying on Facebook. We're relying on YouTube. We're relying on all of these social media platforms to do what God told us to do. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We talk to a lot of people every day, and we never offer Christ. And what finer time to do that right now when people are suffering and dying and grieving? And what finer time to do that? You say, well, you know, they got a lot of other churches and people that they can talk to. I'm sure they don't want to hear my voice. Listen, he said, they will hear your voice. Because who's talking in their ears? may not be the one ordained to talk in your ears. They may be waiting on you because you were specifically chosen by God to say something. Hello, are you with me? Yes. Usually when you're talking to people and you're talking to them about Christ and you're talking about the love of God and etc. if you watch them, they will even, they don't say anything. Their body language will give you the proof. And that is, go ahead and keep talking to me. Or I don't want to hear that. Are you with me? When I used to, many, many years ago, go in the streets and preach the gospel and knock on doors, I've had a lot of people slam the doors in my face. And a lot of people that say, I don't want it. And still others say, you got the wrong apartment. But I also had people that came out and heard, listened. Okay? And you have to understand, one plants, one waters, God gives the increase. You don't know where you're fitting. It could be the first a lot. They can have a thousand people to talk to them about Christ. But only the one person ordained to reach that person, they're going to hear. I mean, think about your own salvation. Think about it. How many people talked to you about Christ before you said yes? How many people came across your past before you said, oh, do? I do. And before you decide to come to church. How many people? Your job is not to make people. Just to introduce the gospel. And I used to pass out tracts. And it was three things that God wanted you to know. All the way back then. Three things. See when we were passing tracts out. And we were knocking on doors and meeting people. We recognized that people. Attention span wasn't that long. So you had to be. Stealthy and swift and get in and get out. Mm -hmm. State your case before they have a time before they have time to do that. And I remember first time the door opened. And I would introduce myself and tell them that God sent me and he says he's got three things to say to you. Number one, you're not you're a sinner and you can't save yourself. See that automatically takes them out of the the fray of things. You mean I can't? No, you don't have anything to do with this. The scripture says it's not by works, least any man should boast, but it is by the gift of God. Life is a gift from God. Forgiveness is a gift from God. Someone giving their life for, for you is a gift from God. All of that is a gift. And so you can show the side if you want to, disregard it if you want to, but there will come a day when all of this will come rushing back on you, but it might be a time when you can't do anything about it. We used to do that. And people actually got saved. We cannot afford to. Now next week, I'm going to be sharing for the first time this message. Five things that every believer needs to know. Five things why every believer needs a pastor why the church has been given 
that particular officer, that particular call, and what makes him or her uniquely different from everybody else that's in the five-fold ministry. You need, you got to have one. Are you with me? Yes. Yeah. I think we had a, a, what was that nursery rhyme book a long time ago about the mother? Oh, mother goose? No, mother. is this my mother? Oh, yeah. Uh, Who is my mother? Yeah, that's the book by, um, yeah, Are You My Mother? Are You My Mother? Mm -hmm. Wow. Listen at that. Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss. Mm -hmm. Are You My Mother? <laughs> and you know, because you can be raised to answer that question differently. Mm -hmm. And it's been proven by the educators that it can have an adverse effect on how you see yourself. Yep. The same one with Christ. That's the accent. Are you my God? Yep. Are you the Savior of the world? Or should I look for another? Because that's what John sent his disciples to the prison when he was dying. When, he, when they had thrown him in prison, they said, go and, go and ask Jesus. He said, before I die, I want to make sure I know. Are you the one? Or should I look for another? He said, go and tell John that the blind see the deaf here and the dead is raised. The poor has the gospel preached. He never gave it affirmative and just said, go and tell John, yes, I am the one. And I always just say, tell John to decide on this matter and judge me by the works that I do. If Christ came today, if the Lord came in the earth today, will our works stand the test of time? Who did you get saved lately? Who have you led to Christ lately? Who have you pulled back from the break of destruction or hell itself? Whose life have you made a difference in lately? That's the kind of answer. You know, when I come to church and, and I want to be uplifted and the praise singers are singing, I'm inspired, I feel great. I feel like this is the, the, uh, the pretext to something greater. And if they don't know that they reached anybody else, they reached me because I love the Lord. And I want to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. So before I end this subject matter, again, on Ephesians 5, Okay, I think uh, Deacon um, Camel is reading, reading that, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay, and verse 5 and, and 1, about being followers and walk in love, right? Yeah. Uh, he said, and has given himself an offering mm -hmm. and a sacrifice to God. You see that? For a sweet smell and savior. Look at it. Look at that thing. If you want me to walk in love, if you want me to demonstrate love, if you want to be like Christ, he's already telling me right there. Someone has already done it. And you have no excuse for not doing it. Christ did all of this so we can do all that we've been asked to do. We can walk in love. But he says a sacrifice. You see that thing? We have to give ourselves to love. Uh-oh. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. We have to give ourselves over to love. We can't regulate love. We can't dictate to love. We can't tell it. We have to surrender to it. And let it make us strong, capable, and able to receive. Recover All Ministries Church in the City of Sunrise is a wonderful place. It's an oasis for God's people that are searching for how to start again, how to begin again, how to continue a walk in a closer way with Christ, and most of all, how to set the precedent in this time 
searching myself. What am I to do in 22? I need to turn inwardly and look at myself and evaluate my commitment to Christ, not to church, to Christ. Not to a building, to Christ. Not to a man or a woman, but to Christ. That's what I need to do. And that's why we meet here every Sunday at 5 o'clock from 5 to 7 to celebrate God's goodness and to celebrate God's life. So that when you are actually leaving here and others are viewing this telecast, however you're seeing it, listen, this message is for you. What I like about love is love frees you up to be you. You don't have to carry no burden because it's strong enough to carry that burden for you. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 7, cast your care over on the Lord because he cares for you. Don't you want God to bear your burden so that you don't have to bear it? Amen? Amen. So I invite you to come out, listen to this message, and if you're not saved, I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now and hopefully Hopefully, you'll trust the word that your heart is receiving right now. Just bow your head with me. Father, in Jesus' name, I am a sinner and I need a Savior. Come into my heart and change me. You said in your word, if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I will be saved. I confess Jesus is Lord. And I'm asking you to come into my heart right now, Lord, and change me, make me a new creation in Christ Jesus. I don't want to be addicted to church and church buildings, doctrines that are not of your will and purpose for my life. I just want to know you. I want you to come closer, draw me in. Holy Spirit, fill me with your presence. Be my guide, be my instructor, be my teacher and cause me to walk and live the life that you ordained for me. I receive all that Jesus Christ died on Calvary to bring to pass as my divine substitute. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. I hope to see you again. I hope you to tune in again where we will share the important things and principles of the Lord. Amen. amen. Give the Lord a praise.